So go ahead and graph those three points. And this is where I will screw up. So just yell when I screw up. Um, I think I'm gonna label them just to help. Okay, and then nothing is numbered. So we're just gonna number as we go. Um, so go ahead and answer, so you plotted, answer two and three. I'm just looking at what everyone looks like live and in person. It's exciting. All right, you guys. And we are going for organized chaos here. Okay. Um, so, number two. Why are the points A and B on the opposite side of the Y axis? Okay. I like that. There's my shorthand. You guys can say it however you want. You guys can see this, right? You're good. Yeah. You're about to not be good. All right, and how come B and C are on different sides of the X axis? Oh, come on, people, you're in person, talk. Exactly, sounds great. Okay, now I apologize for this and I couldn't edit it because I got this as a PDF, so I couldn't make this, but below, AKA on the next page, don't change that, that's just me having issues. You'll find a graph of the unit circle with grid lines and the Cartesian plane. Locate the point in quadrant one that is marked in the circle. What is the ordered pair that goes with that? Okay, so go to the next page and I apologize for this not being together. Okay, but what would the ordered pair be for that dot? Whoops, you can't see that dot. Good luck counting. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, go more, go, go easier than that. Because you should be able to just go decimal. It should just be a nice decimal, not the way I just drew the dot. So the dot should be, I just made the dot worse, you guys. The dot should be like right here. You think that made it worse. But so it should be here and here, I think. Does that look better? Okay, so what would that ordered pair be? Yeah, so 0.6 and 0.8. Okay, so what's a little funky, well, we just kind of have like a unit circle here, okay? And that was meant to be exactly on the unit circle. Okay, so it's 0.6 and 0.8. I don't know if it's my allergies that are making this look blurry or if it just looks blurry. Um, and then, here, let's just number these all, five, six, seven, and eight. The ordered pair uses two distances, a horizontal distance from the y-axis, okay, so that just means this, beep, and a vertical distance from the x-axis, okay. Instead of using two distances, could you use there by using a distance and an angle? If so, what would they be for that point mark? So what we're saying here is what would that distance be and what would that angle be? Okay, so that's what they want you to find. Okay, so can you find that distance 
And can you find that angle? And I guess the first question just says, well, it's okay, it doesn't matter, we'll find them all. And I'm gonna tell you that, yes, you can, of course you can. All right, and I'm gonna apologize, well, that's okay. I'm just gonna leave it like that and then we'll move it in a second. Yeah, I know, how come the calculators, here they come. Make sure you're in degrees, you guys. Make sure you're in degrees. Degrees, degrees, degrees. I'm making sure I'm in degrees, I'm in degrees. Yeah, we want everything today. I'm double checking before I spit that out. Yeah, we're gonna be in degrees. We could be in radians, but we're not gonna be. All right, so as you guys are calculating this, and people at home, you can play along too, you can speak. Don't put it in the chat because it's too much for me. But everybody, what is the radius of this thing? What's my distance gonna be? Yeah, that distance is just gonna be one. It's just another unit circle, okay? So the distance from the origin, this is my new thing, playing with this little meaningless ponytail I had. Did you see? I, don't, I keep doing it, it's making me crazy. That I'm doing it, it's making me crazy. All right, so that distance is one. And then in order to find this angle, I know that this side, oops, let me put that 0 0.8, and this is 0 0.6. So I'm going to guess, I don't know, what'd you guys get for an angle? 25? 45. Anybody else? Ah, why can't it be 45? Because then the two sides would be equal to each other. Ah, this is so exciting. It's like a discussion. The two sides would have to be equal for it to be a 45. Ah, there we go, 53, that sounds better. And so I know an opposite, right? So go back to your basics, everything you know, and I know an adjacent. So the tangent of my angle is gonna be opposite over adjacent. So I don't, eight over six, I really should be able to do that in my head, I apologize, that was embarrassing. And then I'm gonna do the inverse tan of that. I had a moment. So my angle is about 53.1 degrees. Okay, so it's just a different way of identifying it. So we have um, an angle and we have a distance. All right, so you're gonna do the same thing and just with a 0 0.32, okay, just to practice. Okay, so what that means is it's like you're just pretending, right, that you're graphing the point one, two, three, one, two, you don't even have to graph it, but that's what you're doing. Okay, so you're going to find the distance to it. And then you're going to find that angle. That was the worst drawing ever, but that's what you're looking for. I should have drawn it bigger on the side. And then, <laughs> I just went to lick the finger again. That is my big, that's my big entertainment for all the whole class. I went and licked my mask. Instead, I could go and drink a tea. I feel like I can't turn pages, and it's so freaking humid in here. Mm -hmm. I know every day it's like something new that I do. I'm here purely for your entertainment, trust me. Okay, and that paper's not big enough. What's the chance that I have a piece of graph paper in here? 100%. Is there something drawn on my graph paper? Oops, this is an answer key to something. I can't remember, that. I know what that challenge was. I don't wanna, well, I suppose if I didn't know it was there, it's not really gonna help me.
my gosh, do we have to make these so close together? This whole piece of graph paper is a waste. I was going to put them all in the same grid, but I can't. Two and the four. I feel like I've hit a new low in handwriting today. I'm gonna change colors just so maybe it's easier on you. Ah, look at we've got our angle here. There we've got our 45. Writing things backwards now. I just did that backwards. What did I do? All right, so hopefully these aren't too horrible. A little bit of calculations. You're kind of doing the same pattern every time, right? Using the distance formula, or actually using the Pythagorean theorem, um, which really is also the distance formula, same difference. And then you're using tangent each time. And like here, I had to draw my triangle, so I remember to do opposite over adjacent. I didn't bother to draw. Oh, I just because it was a two two. That was the happy example. When it's two two, it's got to be a forty five degree angle because both sides are equal. But I also know that sometimes when you're in the middle of a math problem, you're like, I know that that should be a 45 degree, but you just start doing math and it's okay. You can still do the inverse tangent for these, okay? So for every single one of these, we got a radius, and I'm gonna sneak this up here. We got a radius and an angle. That's an R for radius, okay? And that's how you graph a polar point. Okay, it's always a magnitude and an angle or a radius and an angle. So like if I was gonna put this as an ordered pair, right, when it was a rectangular ordered pair, normal system, it was 0.6 and 0.8. But as polar, it would be one and it would be 53.1 degrees. Okay, three, two as polar is 3.6 and 33.7 degrees. Okay, two, two as polar is 2.8 and 45 degrees. And this last one, three, one is 3.2 and 18.4 degrees. Okay, and what that translates to, and this is funky, Okay, and we haven't truly gotten to polar paper yet, have we? Of course we haven't. Um, polar paper looks like this. It looks like a whole bunch of circles. Of course you can't see that. It's probably good because it really looks horrible. Okay, that's polar paper. Okay, and it just keeps going. 
So like for this point, it's one out. So I would go out to the first circle and then it's 53 degrees, which obviously is right there. Okay, so these two match is just a different coordinate system. Okay, so like if I wanted this one, 3.6, I'd have to go out three, one, two, three, and a 0.6 of a circle. <laughs> I laugh at myself. And then I'd be over here at like 33 degrees. So I'd be like in there somewhere. Okay, so just a different way to graph. And then what's really cool is that like, okay, graphing a point is not cool, but when we get, you can do these really cool graphs and we'll do a couple at the end today, All right? Okay, so is this kind of okay? Yes, so we found a magnitude and a direction. What we really did for my physics people is we did vectors. Did my juniors do vectors already? Yeah, that, that's exactly what we did. We did a magnitude, right? We found how large it was and we found a direction with the angle. So the good news is for my sophomores, when you do physics next year, you'll be like, ah, oh, we kind of did this last year. All right, now we're gonna go the other way, hopefully. So on the previous page, you were given several ordered pairs that contained a horizontal component, an X, and a vertical component, which is Y. And you're asked to find the distance from the origin and the angle for each. With this in mind, could the point three, two, and this represent the same point? Okay, and was that one of the points we just did? I feel like it was. Was it? Yeah. Uh, yes. I think number six. six. Oh yeah, I should number. Here we go again with this numbering. This is what happens when you can't edit something. You go low key. There we go. Yeah. So it was a yes, and then I'll just put here that it was number six. Okay. How about the point three one and square root of ten eighteen point four? And that was what number eight. So that is also a yes. Okay, so you should have answered yes to both of those. This means any point in the rectangular plane can be re represented using a distance from the origin and an angle. Describe how you could just represent the Cartesian coordinate using an angle and a distance. You must be careful. The three points you all did were in quadrant one. What if you had a point of negative three, two? Okay, so could we do negative three, two? Yeah, we definitely could. Okay, let's try to do it. Okay, and if it helps, sometimes it helps to scribble this down anyway. Right here I am at negative three, two. I'm making sure I don't graph my X's and Y's backwards or do something like really silly at this point. Do you know what, that's, yeah, yeah. If you leave it exact or if you go decimal, either one's fine. I only went decimal so that when I drew my circles, I could draw out how far it went. Yeah, but I'd actually probably, I mean, first of all, it's easier for you to leave it exact. Yeah, so leave it exact, that's fine. And if you went decimal, I don't care. It's COVID year, I don't care. I might've cared in other years, but I don't care. I feel like I need a triangle stick. What was it, three, two? We are going here, nine. We still got, didn't we have a square to 13 before? Okay, so my theta is a little weird, but I have complete faith in you guys. Opposite and adjacent. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I have a feeling we're all gonna find this slightly differently, so. So let me give you guys a second. This is how I'm thinking about it. Because if I did a negative angle, I would have got something over here. And I don't really want a negative angle. 
don't know, let me see what happens if I do a negative angle. What is that, 123.7 degrees? Okay, right, and that would make sense if I come over here. No, it does not. I just failed miserably. Because yeah, that's 33 degrees. Yeah, it would be 180 minus, there we go, 30. Shoot, I just crossed it out. What was it, 33.7 degrees? Yeah. yeah, there we go. I was thinking backwards. All right, so we have to think a little bit here. Um, if I did the negative angle for inverse tan of two thirds, oh gosh, I'm <laughs> glad I didn't put my calculator up there, right? Because it really would have been negative, like two over three. I would have gotten negative 33 degrees. I would have gotten an angle down here. And then I guess I would have said to add 180 to it. So it would have been the same thing. Either way would have worked. But you had to think a little bit on that one. That was a little funky. And then I'm going to write it again as a, as a radius and an angle. So my radius was 3.6 and my angle was 146.3. Okay. And I swear that this is wrong. I think that's latitude. It's been 150 years since I took geom or, uh, geology. Geology, geography, geography. All right, look at the figure below. below. It's a map of the Earth from the North Pole. On the map, the North Pole is the origin. The latitude lines mimic concentric circles. And so you define polar coordinates as a distance, bless you, bless you, and an angle. Okay, or we could call it a radius and an angle. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it as those two. And of course I'm off the screen again. More epic failures on the screen. Uh oh, people, people at home, you gotta, I'm not watching the chat, I'm so sorry. Oh, it's okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I got 146 because this angle, this is the worst triangle ever, let me make it bigger. Okay, when I did this angle, I got that this angle was, 33.7 degrees, but I really wanted the rest of that angle. So that's why I did 180 minus 33.7. Okay, or if you really did the tangent of two over negative three, then you got negative 33.7 degrees. These are all of our options. Um, and that's down here, but I needed an angle up here. So then I'd have to, again, to get back up here, I had to add 180, just my extra scribbles for the at-home version of math class. All right, so really the key so far today is this. Okay, so to use the angle, we just did the tangent of theta is y over x, right? Talk about keeping it simple. And the distance, we just did the radius squared is x squared plus y squared, right? Nice and simple. We did nothing complicated. We really did nothing complicated. And it worked out pretty well. And somewhere on your trig cheat sheet, I swear it says that. Let me find my, uh oh. I think I have a cutout. I'm used to this just being on a thing with, I'll see if I can find one. There's vectors. Mr. Jones told me I didn't have to do vectors, so I didn't do them. Yeah, so there's our first two rules. Okay, so x squared plus y squared is r squared. Tangent of theta is y over x. He said, leave vectors for physics. I said, okay. Done. I'm easy. I'm okay. Are you guys still good? Do we need a break? Are we okay? We're good? All right. Okay, so now there's some polar paper that doesn't suck. <laughs> okay, and we got we managed to get polar on top of rectangular. So up at the top, it says below you will see a polar graph superimposed with a Cartesian system. Use the graph below to plot each of the following. And look at how exciting we went to radians again. Okay, I know you're all thrilled with that. Next year, you're going to have to, you'll have to, you will, you'll, you'll be fine. But so you want to graph the rectangular points, okay? 
and you want to graph the polar points. And let's just keep this simple. Let's do this. First of all, we'll call this number 13. And let's label these guys. Let's call this point A, B, C, and this guy D, E, and F. Okay. So let me give you some time. And like, so here, right? Here they did these great exact answers, but in order to graph them, you're gonna have to go decimal, right? Okay, and again, for these, you might have to go to degrees. Okay, so you're gonna plot three points that are polar. Um, so again, three means, right? This is a radius and an angle. So three means I'm out on the third circle, and then you're just gonna do the best you can. This is my angle, four pi over three, okay? So three pi over three would be at pi. So I have to go another pi over three. So I think it's like, I'm double check. Oh, first of all, I gotta be on the third circle. I was on the fourth circle. I have to go another pi over three. So like if I was gonna graph that, I'd probably be, and, and you guys, these are not gonna be exact, but I'd probably be like there-ish. Okay, we're just guesstimating. You can't see, look at my epic fail again. So it's on the third circle because the radius is three. Okay, right, I come out one, two, three. And then my angle was four pi over three. So I know right here, still pi, right? Life hasn't changed, it's the same thing. And so I have to go another pi over three or I have to go another 60 degrees. Okay, and just do like the best you can, right? These are not gonna be exact, bless you. These are not gonna be anywhere close to exact. Okay, just do the best. And like for these, go ahead and do decimal approximations, right? So you can, I mean, I don't know how to graph three root two over four, right? What the heck does that equal? So go ahead, take some time and graph the other five points. And then you can even answer question 14 at the bottom of the page. And I'm gonna decimal these guys out because Oops. Oh, you guys, this is supposed to be a two. There was a mistake. Oh, I, it's okay, I caught it, I caught it. That's supposed to be a square to two up top. Two circles and five pipes. Oh, oh. Oh no, you guys are good with negative angles. Why am I owing? Um, as in like for, from feet to inches. It's also important for us to do this with coordinates in the plane. In the Cartesian system, we use X, Y. And in the polars, we use R theta. Using what you discovered early in the activity, you now find a way to convert. Locate a point in quadrant one on the graph below. If this is a rectangular point, it's X, Y. If it's polar, it's R theta. Okay, so that's not super exciting. So I'm just gonna draw this into a triangle, just like we were doing. Okay, and I'm gonna just label the heck out of it. So this is my X, that's my Y, that's my theta, and that's my radius. Oh, <laughs> I just went ahead without the directions. I'm the worst at following directions. Draw a perpendicular line to the point of the X axis, then draw a second line from the origin to the point. You should have a right triangle in quadrant one, where one side is on the positive X axis. Label the size of the triangle. Look at what I did already. I'm so sorry. Label an acute angle in the corner next to the origin using theta. Okay. Using what you know about right triangles and trigonometry, find four equations that relate the variables x and y to r and theta. Okay. So for the first one, what, what do we do for our Pythagorean theorem? What do we got? Yeah. Yep. 
And then for tangent, we know Yes. And if you wanted to, you could even do this. But it's the same. It, they're the same. And I'm off the screen again. Yeah, I'm the worst at leading this because if you just did these on, the, on your own, you would read the directions and you wouldn't race ahead. Okay. Now, this is kind of cool. I like this part. Um, so I was just leaving that all under 16. Sorry. So I, I'm going to kind of sneak my page to help you here. I don't know if this will help, but we'll try. There. Now we have our triangle. All right. So find the value of cosine and then isolate the rectangular coordinate. So don't worry about that. So how would I write co cosine of theta? So cosine of theta would be. Yeah, so it would be. Yeah, so I'm just going to label this because that was a really good idea. And this is hypotenuse. So it would be x over r. And then they said to isolate the rectangular coordinate. That just means the x. So x is r cosine theta. So that's going to be one of our biggies. And then if I go from that same triangle, do the same thing for sine. So sine is going to be the opposite over the radius. OK, so these are my other two conversions that I have. So for any ordered pair x, y, I'm going to use R cosine of theta. That's my X. And R sine of theta is my Y. And remember back when we had our unit circle, our ordered pairs went cosine, sine. So it's the same way. X goes with cosine, Y goes with sine. So we didn't change anything up on you. It's just another way to find it. So we just have all these relationships. Okay, so now here we'll number this guy 17 just because. Here's a 17 and here's an 18. All right, so convert this point to rectangular. So remember, when it's written in polar, it's an R and it's a theta. And I realize you've known polar for, you know, all of a half hour. Okay, but you're just going to use those equations to convert. And now I'm going to warn you. Oh, 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 where's this going to go wrong, you guys? It's going to go wrong on your calculator. I'm going to give you a hint. Why is it going to go wrong? Yeah, we're in radians. So just be super careful. So in fact, I'm going to make a little note. Mode radians. And then number 18 is like what we were doing before. 18 is back to the old stuff. I wish they gave you another practice one. And then we're going to play. Ha <laughs> ha. We deserve to play a little bit. Have any of you guys ever done anything with polar before? OK, cool. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go through 17. I'm just giving you guys some time. So just do 17 and 18. And then when you're done, just either like people in the room, let me know if you're done or people online, you know, type of done in there. So I think, what do we got? Two, four, six, eight. Yes, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not doing passes. I think we're supposed to, but I just feel like that's gross. <laughs> like that, I'm just going to call it. That's gross. I'm going to hope she doesn't get yelled at. Yeah, you guys, and especially people who are like sitting in here, because I know these desks get so uncomfortable. If you need to take a break and like go get a drink of water, just, you know, it's all good. People at home, you're on your own. You can race to, wait, to the bathroom or get a drink. 
I do miss the kitchen being five feet away from where I was teaching. I'm not going to lie. That was convenient. That was good. I also miss snacking while teaching. Apparently I haven't written for a few days. My hands killing me here. We have new monitors. All right, so I'm just gonna start showing a little bit of work. So watch if you need me. If you don't, you can ignore me. But so for my X value, it's R and the cosine of theta. So it's gonna be two times the cosine of seven pi over six. And I'm going to change my mode. It's going to be two cosine seven pi. Oh, whoa, I lost my over six. Okay, so my x value is going to be about negative 1.7. And then I'll do the same thing for my y value. So two sine seven pi over six. So my y is negative one. So my ordered pair, and there's a lot of work going down there, is going to be negative 1.7 and negative one. Okay, so again, here it is polar. Here it is with my x's and my y's. Okay, and then just to remind you that you know what you're doing and that you already know this. All right, this one is like we were doing before. So if it helps to slap down a graph, slap down a graph, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. It's not gonna be a pretty graph. All right, that's my theta. So I know that R squared is four squared plus five squared. I don't know why I just switched the two numbers, I'm sorry. But so R is gonna be 16 plus 25, is that 41? So the square root of 41. And again, I would totally be lazy and leave it that way. I would leave, unless you have to graph it, I would leave it as a square root of 41. If you want decimal, great. And then I know that my tangent of theta is y over x. So my inverse tangent of four over five. Theta is, okay, now I'm in radians, so I need to be back to degrees. My first hint was that I got an angle of 0.67. Oops, I gotcha. Awesome. All right, let me move my paper over a little bit. Um, so you guys, I screwed up, right? I, I had it in radians, so I got 0.67. And right there to me, that was like, duh, that's how I remembered. And so it really should be 38.7 degrees. Okay, and then to write it as a polar coordinate, it's always the radius and then the angle. All right, skipping, skipping. We're skipping a bunch. You guys ready to skip a bunch? We're going to where it's fun. Okay, a couple more skippings. First of all, we kind of good here. So now we really have all four of our equations. Okay, and in fact, we just use them here, right? Here we used our x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And we used our tangent of theta as y over x. And then to convert backwards, we used x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. All right, and now we're just skipping. Look at us skipping, 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 skipping. Go down to this. We want the fun, okay? So we wanna try graphing some of these. I don't even know that these need a number, but we're gonna try it. Okay, so here goes crazy. Ready for crazy? Uh, go mode. Um, this is so bad. I can't remember if I went degrees or radians. <gasps> I'm having a teacher panic moment. I feel like I want radians. I'm gonna go radians and when the graph doesn't work, we'll change it. But I'm gonna change from function Okay, I don't even know if you guys remember this. Remember we did parametrics at the beginning of the year and we had T's? 
and we had like t equals three x plus something and like t equals something plus y and so we had to change our parameters and then this one is polar so we're going to go to poll i think we want to be in radians does it say anywhere on this page i do this every year isn't that funny that's all right if it doesn't work we'll find out um go to y equals and get rid of stuff and you'll see it looks pretty cool already and then i'm just going to type it in so two minus two cosine and then it'll automatically oops go back quit y equals um it'll automatically change your x to a theta so just type x and it'll be a theta because it knows it knows you need your theta Okay, and then I would zoom six it and then we'll hope. Oh, there we go. It worked. Okay, it doesn't look exactly the same, but it's not bad. Okay, and actually, if you want it to look a little better, if you zoom square after you zoom six, then it just makes things symmetrical because otherwise it stretches things out in the x direction. That really is not an exciting graph. Let's go down to the next one. The next one's way more exciting the rose hip or the rose. So y equals three cosine of, oh my gosh, why do we keep doing that? I just jumped down here. That's okay, I can show you here. So when you're in mode, we want polar and then degrees or radians, radians, radians. I'm going to see what happens if you're in degrees. Maybe it'll be fine. We're not fine. And we're not fine. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to write a little experimentation. And now we graph. Ah, oh, there we go. There's my rose. Doesn't really look like a rose at all. Looks like a four leaf clover. Oh, there's, yeah, there's one more in there. This one is not exciting. Look at the next graph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for the mode, we want polar. And then we need radians. I tried it with degrees and nothing happens. It's got to be, yeah. I wasn't sure. Sometimes you just got to experiment, right? And here, let me help. Mode. And there are a couple, they're just going to ask you to identify them in the homework. So you'll just graph them and see which is which. So you need to be in radians and then polar. And then when you want to get back to graphing normal y equals, you got to change it back to functions. All right, I think there's one more little graph here, but let me leave that there for a second. And then we'll try the challenge and then we'll call it a day. Okay, considering nothing worked at the beginning, we did pretty good. All right, so let's just try graphing this one to make sure it works. So we got y equals four sine of theta. And we got a circle with a radius of four. So those are just a couple of the graphs. Like I said, on the homework, I know there's four of them, and it just asks you which equation matches which graph. So you'll just play on your calculator just to play. Okay, so for those of you at home, if you weren't playing on your calculator, make sure you switch your mode and your, uh, well, it's really just your mode to polar and radians. Okay, and then this is such a, this is a crazy extension question, um, but I'm going to help a little bit because I don't know why you would come up with how to do it. Okay, I'm just calling this number 22 because that's what it was called. All right, so you want to convert this thing. All right, so I'm just going to give you a hint. And once you know the trick, converting is not like that bad. Okay, so a couple little hints here. Like you notice I got an R here. 
Okay, and over here I have four sine of theta. <coughs> Excuse me. However, if I notice my equation here, I have an R squared. And even though I have a number here, I don't really have an R there, I have a value. Okay, so here it is. This is how to make a hard problem easy. And I don't know why you would think to do this, except you guys are geniuses, so maybe that's why. But what I'm gonna do is multiply the entire equation by R. And suddenly you can do amazing substitutions because you end up with R squared equals four R sine of theta. Okay, so that's the killer move. Okay, why, again, why you would think to multiply by R, I don't know, but that, that's the secret right there, multiply by R. And now we got stuff, because R squared is X squared plus Y squared. And R sine of theta, that whole thing, R sine of theta is just Y. Okay, and then just to give you guys a hint here, this is the one we just graphed. So we got a circle here. Okay, so now we're gonna convert this into an equation of a circle. So I'm gonna set it equal to zero. Okay, and then I'm gonna be tricky. Well, that's all right, I'll set it equal to zero. And then, wow, I haven't said these words in months. We have to complete the square. Wow, I know you guys love completing the square. Don't forget to add it to both sides. I think Ms. Herbster's beating people next door <laughs> and laughing about it. That is clearly what I heard. Right, so after all that, we get a circle, which we kind of already knew. Um, its center is at zero two, and its radius is two. Oh, I said before its radius was four. <laughs> it is not four, it's only two. Its entire, its diameter was four. I just realized I said that. Oh, hold. Okay, so again, the million dollar move here is to multiply by R so that you can make it look like the equations we know. Oh, that was amazing, you guys. I don't know how we got through that. I don't know about you, but my hand's dead. But we did it. Hey, you guys, that's all. That, I think that is all the trig for the year. That's it. That is the end of trig. So we'll practice this some more on Wednesday. We will definitely have that sign homework quiz. Um, and then we'll work on the review on Friday. I think that's all I got. Oh, thank you guys for being patient, especially when that didn't work at the beginning. Why would renaming it make it not work? That seems so weird. And again, what's really weird is I don't let downloaded that on, onto my iPad and it works because usually I get an error message the first time and then I just ask again and then it works. That's my survival me mechanism for class.